G'day everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about flame colour and some of the science that allows flames to have the colours that they do. Now a great example of flame colours is the difference between a diffused flame and a premixed flame. But this isn't the only example of flames having different colours. Because even within the flame, there can be a large variation in colour. But to explain how this works, we will first need to talk about light. Now generally when we think about light, we think about what our eyes can see. But light is made up of photons of different energies according to their wavelength on the electromagnetic spectrum. And these wavelengths can vary from relatively low energy radio waves all the way to high energy gamma radiation. Now the type of energy that we describe as light comes from a very specific part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And it's what we call the visible light spectrum. And this is the area of electromagnetic radiation that our eyes have evolved to be able to see. And when we're talking about flame colour, it is the visible light spectrum that is the most important part for us to focus on. Now, for a long time, it's been known that if we take a prism and expose it to sunlight, we can separate the sunlight into the different colours that make up the visible light spectrum. But back in the 1800s, a scientist by the name of William Herschel wanted to know if the different colours of light contained different amounts of energy. And so he conducted an experiment where he laid down thermometers in each of the different colours. And he also laid down a thermometer outside of the visible red light. And while all the thermometers did heat up, he found that the temperature increased from the blue light to the red light, with the red being the warmest of all of the visible light. But to his surprise, he found that the thermometer sitting outside of the visible red light was the warmest of them all. Now this distribution in temperature was a reflection of the solar radiation spectrum. But this aside, he had demonstrated that the different colours do have different temperatures. And he had also made a discovery because what he had detected with the thermometer sitting outside of the visible light spectrum was infrared radiation. And this infrared radiation is particularly useful to firefighters who carry thermal imaging cameras. Because these thermal imaging cameras use infrared radiation to be able to see objects that aren't warm enough to emit light in the visible light spectrum. Now this means that these cameras are particularly effective at seeing through smoke and helping firefighters search for victims as well as signs of fire. So the question is, is what happens when we begin to heat an object so that its wavelength moves beyond the infrared and into the visible light spectrum? And an example of that can be seen here because with the lights on, we can quite clearly see the bolt. But when we turn the lights off, it immediately becomes too dark to see. But when we point a thermal imaging camera at the bolt, we can clearly see its infrared signature. So to move this bolt from the infrared into the visible light spectrum, we need to heat it. So as we apply the blowtorch to the bolt, we can see that the bolt is gaining more and more energy and that's clearly visible in the thermal imaging camera. But we haven't yet added enough energy to the bolt for it to have moved out of the infrared and into the visible light spectrum. So as we add more and more heat, we should be able to see it begin to emit some visible light. And this will be from the very end of the visible light spectrum in the dark reds. Now as we add more energy into the bolt, we can expect to see the bolt slowly move from the reds into the oranges and then eventually into the yellows. And this is following the visible light spectrum. And what's happening is that as we move through that spectrum, the wavelengths are becoming shorter and shorter and therefore the photons are carrying more and more energy. And this just goes to show how we can move from the infrared through to the visible light spectrum. Now this process is even clearer as we take the heat away. Because right now we have it up in the bright orange and as we take the heat away, you can clearly see it 
moving back down through the visible light spectrum. And as the bolt loses more and more heat to the surrounding air, we will expect it to become darker and darker as it moves further down through that visible light spectrum. And eventually, it will stop emitting visible light altogether. But as you can see, it is still emitting a large amount of infrared energy, despite the fact that we can no longer see it with the naked eye. Now this process is also applicable to flames, because within flames there are a whole range of different temperatures based on where that part of the flame sits within the flammability range. Because if you have a look here, we have a diffused flame that is burning in a fairly inefficient manner, and therefore our fire is burning with a darker yellow flame. But if we add more energy into this mix, by slowly turning our diffused flame into a premixed flame, and moving our mixture much closer to an ideal mixture, then we can see that the flame temperature increases and our flame colour changes from a dark yellow to a bright yellow and then eventually becomes blue. And this just demonstrates why our flame colours can be so different. Now when we're applying this to the fire ground, this can be a useful indicator to give us an idea about under what conditions the fire is burning. For example, if there is an abundance of bright yellow flames, this can be an indicator that the fire has access to a lot of oxygen and therefore is able to burn as effectively as a diffused flame can. Whereas if the fire is burning with dark orange or red flames, then that fire may be burning under a ventilation controlled state and therefore that fire wants more oxygen. And if the fire is given access to more oxygen, then we could expect that fire to burn more effectively and the overall heat release rate can increase. Now, it's important to note that flame colour is just one signal of a whole range of different factors that need to be considered when sizing up a fire. But it is a useful tool to gain an understanding of what the fire wants and how it might react depending on what tactics we use. But that's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.